Have a seat, please. So, why do you want to host the last podcast, Benjamin? I think you know the answer. Okay. Um, do you know what lies in the shadow of the statue? How should I know? Um, I don't see any reason I should take you on my podcast. But it's not your podcast, Carmel. Okay, dude, you creep me out. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go. I don't think you want to do that, Carmel. Huh? The end game is here. Two players, two sides. One is light, one is dark. One believes in human nature and its ability to transcend and evolve, and one is a pessimist, feeding on human weakness and sinful nature, much like Flannery O'Connor's belief system in the book Jacob was reading. Both of Roman or Egyptian empire origins, judging by their clothes and practices, or are gods like Christ and the Antichrist, Aslan and the White Witch of Narnia, or even Anubis, god of the dead connected to Smoky that battles against Horus referenced by the Eye of Horus in Jacob's weaving. I suspect our Antichrist is in control of Smoky and also resides inside Christian Shepherd. So Jack's dad is really dead as much as Locke is. No zombies, merely shapeshifters. The loop referred to could be a loop of human history that ends in a catastrophe. So Jacob attracts people to the island that are good or redeem themselves on island to change the Valenzetti equation values to try and prove human nature prevails. How does Jacob bring people to the island? Possibly by touching them. Our losties might be the group that Jacob was waiting for because it consists of people who did real evil, like Sawyer, Kate and Said, but have a touch of light and love in their souls that Jacob nurtures within them through their island experiences. Their transformation is his way to prove the Antichrist wrong and makes the series about the victory of human love. It is also possible that the Antichrist tried to kill these people or drive them off their paths and Jacob was there to save them. Look at the ash! The broken ash cycle symbolizes the broken loop, but where was the breach? Tricking Locke into leaving the island? The incident? Saving Ben to begin with? Neither Ben nor Locke were chosen. The last real leader was Eloise, and everything ever since seemed like a loophole. Maybe the new true leader was on board Oceanic 815. Maybe Walt, or as Ilana suggested, Frank, can be a candidate. In the pilot episode, Smokey killed the pilot first thing to assure the leader won't live, maybe. But the pilot wasn't who he was supposed to be. A Jira 316 was the course correction bringing Frank back. How crazy will that be if he leads now? Should we assume Widmore works for the Antichrist just because Bram told Miles he's on the wrong side? Or maybe the wrong move here is going to the island before being ready for it and with a hole in your soul that the Antichrist can take advantage of. All the money in the world isn't going to fill that empty hole inside you, Miles. It seems now Hawking was sacrificing her son to maintain this loop protecting Jacob, or else God help us all and we're all dead, right? The connection Locke felt with the island was bogus. He was always talking to the Antichrist. It was his apparition as Walt that saved him from the Dharma pit and tried to stop the Oceanic Six from leaving. Jacob doesn't work that way. And we know Locke was never really special. But he never seemed uh, particularly special to me. Every time the island wanted sacrifices and such, it was the bad side of the island. Now that makes sense. Since my lost Narnia theory works so far, I'm betting Jacob's body will disappear and he shall rise like the Sphinx back to life in the right moment next season. I even think he left his resurrection failsafe in Hurley's guitar case that should be delivered to Richard or Ilana. When Jacob said, They're coming. He meant the Losties are jumping back or Bram and Ilana are on to the devil. What lies in the shadow of the statue? By the way, I think Rosen Bernard retirement hut is an early version of Jacob's cabin that Horace probably just renovated later. 
That would explain why it had paintings of Vincent all around as he was a resident. I loved the drive shaft ring payoff, and I can't wait to see it return to Claire. It will be poetic if she's found in the jungle next season with no memory of where she was, just like season one, since burning Jacob's cabin released her from the power of the fake Christian. So what happens after the cliffhanger? I still like my idea that everyone dies but continue playing in season six that occurs in their pasts leading to the oceanic flight. However, it is possible that the bright light is a flash that takes them back to the future right before Jughead explodes, making it whatever happened happened. I also think the statue was still standing and was broken in this explosion, creating the baby's problem. I love you so much! No! I personally don't think I can make it for next season without Juliet. This was my last podcast for this season. I'll come back in September with video blogs from Hawaii as season six starts filming. And starting November, I'll do linear recaps fit also for people who never watch the show and want to hop in safely for the last ride. So please subscribe to get notified when that happens. Thank you all for watching and subscribing. Thanks to Dark UFO that hosted this podcast and to Mr. James that sent so many of his subscribers over. If you miss me, you can visit my blog at AbsoluteCarmel.com. Meanwhile, I'm going down with my own cliffhanger. See ya. You should have listened to me, Carmel. Good luck with the podcast. Huh? What do you mean? 